Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. We're so glad that you would join us today. I'm Susan, this is my husband, Jim, and we'll be, we believe, telling you some powerful truths from the Word of God. Life changing. That's right, you know, I, I, we've said this before, just one word from God can change your life forever. That's right, and it, and it can. It can, I mean, it, it just takes, you know, just hearing His voice one time, is just well that's right see in, in the longer we we walk with the lord the more words you're going to hear from the lord and every time you hear one if you will take it mm -hmm. take it take it and incorporate it into your life your lifestyle mm -hmm. it will change you <clears throat> that's right the bible says that you and i are being changed from glory to glory into the very image of Jesus. Uh, yeah. And the way the change <clears throat> comes is through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come by, by what you think or whatever. It comes by receiving the Word of God into your heart. Yes. And acting like it's the truth. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. So today, what we're the title of our message is Days of Uncertainty. Days of Uncertainty. Okay, for just a minute, I want you to think about, you know, in your Bible stories that you learned when you were in Sunday school. We all learned one about baby Moses, remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about what it was like when he was living on the earth. In fact, just think about his birth. Yes. Do you remember his parents had to hide him away for... Well, as long as they could, and then, you know, then they moved with faith and courage, and they built that little basket, and they put him in it. Can you imagine? And his, his sister, probably Miriam, she must have been at least 10 or 12. She says, well, Mom, you know, she uh, y'all, she was in love with her baby brother. I can't even imagine how heart-wrenching this was for her. But they knew in order to save his life, this was what they had to do. And so, you know, they, they, they put this little basket out there in the bulrushes and, you know, then what ha you know what happened, how the princess came along, the princess from the palace mm -hmm. and rescued him out of the water. Okay, so this, this baby grows up, okay? And, like, you can read all this. If you want to read about it in Exodus, like, chapter 1, and then chapter 2, he's already involved in ministry. Right. Okay, I mean, it goes so fast. But you think about the days of uncertainty that he was brought up in. I mean, could it get any worse than that, where they're killing the ba boy babies right. that are born? I mean, you know, we've had some days of uncertainty as well. And everybody faces times in their lives, whether... It was due to this coronavirus that we've had or, or some tragedy in your family or, or just some awful things happen to people and cause things to just get all out of kilter. And so what we want to do today is bring our focus back in and, and give you a little bit of help and ourselves on what to do in these times of uncertainty. Right. Okay, so. And there are things we can do. There are things we can do, and there are things that we can learn that yes. will really help us. But anyway, as I was talking to you about Moses, the point I was trying to get to was this. You know, he gets into ministry, and so there he is, and he's got a farm, and he's got, you know, all these sheep, animals that he's taking care of. And so one day, the, the burning bush, y'all remember that, okay? And so the Bible is so clear, it says how he... He turned aside to hear what God would say. So he turned aside from all his work. You know, a lot of people have had a lot of time to turn aside, <laughs> yes. you know, during the days that we've just been spending with, with the, the lockdown that came and the, the quarantine that came. You know, people have had so much time to turn aside and of course, what would happen is it would be hard to turn aside because then you have so many problems you're facing, right? Right. But nevertheless, he turned aside to hear what God would say. And when he did that, God spoke to him. That's good, isn't it? Okay. But, so, God, but God 
was waiting for him to turn aside. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what would cause me and you to turn aside like that to hear what God would say? I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay. I think it's because God is certain. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about how we've had such uncertain days, mm -hmm. but God is certain. For instance, okay, I have a scripture here, and this says Isaiah 40, verse 8, and then 1 Peter 1, verses 24 and 25. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. You know, God said by himself, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. Mm -hmm. In other words, he doesn't change. In other words, you don't have to wake up some morning and wonder, well, what's God going to do today? Go, go to the Word, go to the Bible and find out. That's right. Because it doesn't it's change. It's already there. It doesn't change. Yeah, He's the same. That's right. Yesterday, today, See, and forever. Most, most all of us, most everybody likes everything to be the same. Mm -hmm. We don't like change. Right. And so, and, and that's the way God is. He likes Everything to be the same. He doesn't change. No, he doesn't change. He doesn't change. There's no shadow yeah. even of turning in him. That's right. In the psalm it says, forever, O Lord, is your word settled in heaven. Uh -huh. Forever. That's why you can take the promises of God and stand on them as truth. That's right. Because they're not going to change. No, that's right. But what does it require? Faith. 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 Y'all remember about faith? Is that all you know about is faith? I'm Susan? telling you, Jim, you always get back to that. Uh, I mean, it's just, well, the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you're just, you're just going to have to develop some faith. But I have some good news for you. Okay. You, and the you know, good God, news is. God requires you and I <clears throat> to live by faith. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, according to the Bible, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, are you paying attention? Mm -hmm. It says, for God has dealt to every, every man, man the, the measure, measure of, of faith. faith. So faith is not something you have to work up. That's right. God has already put it on the inside of you. Now, you, you do need to develop it, though. Yeah. You know, let's think about this. Okay. You, you you had this baby comes into the world. You know, aren't they are precious, right? And they come into the world. They're just laying there. Mm -hmm. They can't, <laughs> they can't get up and walk. They can't crawl. They can't sit up. All they can do is lay there. That's right. They That's can. all they can do. Mm -hmm. But listen to me. Already on the inside of them is is the ability. To walk, crawl, mm -hmm. turn over, talk. It's already there. It's there. Because, you know, pretty soon, baby, it's laying there. And they think, well, you know, I think I can roll over. That's right. And they'll try it, and it doesn't even work. Well, it doesn't work. But pretty soon, they, they, they just keep over. on. Yeah. And then they, they, they crawl. And they start off real slow, and then they can crawl really fast. <clears throat> and then... They stand up. Mm -hmm. Well, no one. I mean, nobody is showing them how to do that. Mm -hmm. It's already on the inside of them to be able to do it. <clears throat> yeah, it's and, like yeah. And it's, then pretty soon, they stand up and they turn loose, and they immediately sit down because it scares them. Mm -hmm. But pretty soon they stand up and they just stand there. Yeah. And pretty soon they take a step, and then they fall down. But you know what? I get because up. it's already on the inside of them. It's something they want to do. It's there. They continue, and they get up, and they walk, and then pretty soon they mm -hmm. can run. But that was always there. That's right. See? Even when they were newborn, and you just looked at them, and That's all right. you could think was how precious they are. That's right. But they couldn't do anything. That's, right. That's the way it is with you. If you are born again, the moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that very moment, God placed within you his plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you by 
faith to walk it out. Mm -hmm. and, and you have the ability because it's already there. Yeah, and you know, like you said, to every man, everybody is given the measure of faith. Okay, so, but you don't know what all is available to you. Right. You, you just know that, man, you got born again. I mean, That's right. and I guess we should talk about that just a second in case you have not. When we say born again, we're talking about an experience that you have because you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Right. Because at some point in your life, you chose to, to believe this man, Jesus, was born into the earth as a babe, mm -hmm. grew up, died a violent death on the cross. But not only that, then he was buried and resurrected. That's right. And the Bible says that when you believe that, you are born again. Born again, that's right. You become a child of God. It's like the light comes on inside of you, and this measure of faith is given to you. But then, you know, like Jim said, this measure of faith needs to be developed. You have to develop it. But you let's just take develop. a minute and let's say a prayer. Okay. Okay. Our so Jesus. so if you're one of those people and you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not sure I did that yet. You know, this, this is, you know, and I remember one time <clears throat> we were doing this evangelism explosion mm -hmm. from our, our church. And so we, we went to these houses. <clears throat> we visit these people, all, you know, different people throughout different parts of the city. And so one night we were sitting there talking to this young couple and they had, a, they had a little girl. And so it was just a regular little family, just precious. And so anyway, we told them all about the good news. And, and the dad, no, we haven't done that. And the mom, no, we haven't done that. But they did go to church. They, they were church people, but they had never actually made this commitment confession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so anyway, here's what happened, y'all. <clears throat> we encouraged them. We said, here's what we want to do. And they go, well, you know, we're going to go to church again next Sunday and we'll just do it there. They would not do it because they thought it had to be done in church. Right. But y'all, this doesn't have to be done in church because you yourself uh, have been referred to in the Bible as the temple of the Lord. Right. You are going to be the church after you ask Jesus into your heart. Right. And so you don't need to be at church to do this. This is a commitment that you make yourself to the Heavenly Father, and then your life belongs to Him. Right. Okay, right. so I've said that. So yeah. now we're going to pray. Okay. Let's okay. Say, dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I heard about Jesus today. I heard about Jesus today. And I do believe he died just for me. And I do believe that he died just for me. I believe he was raised from the dead. I believe he was raised from the dead. And I'm asking now. And I'm asking you now. To receive Jesus into my heart. Come into my heart. And make me new. Make me new. And help me to live life. And help me to live life. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you've done that now, if you pray that prayer, with, we have a book we could like to send you. We have this little book, okay, and it'll just kind of help you get started. You can uh, call us or you can email us or text us, right? right. And we'll give you this book, and it'll help you to kind of get started with your new life of yes, it faith. It's called 31 Days of Faith, so it'll help you. But anyway, so now, now that you know that, see, you have to understand that you just, this faith is in you. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's like, like, you know, we have this quote from Gloria Copeland. Okay. And when you got this faith, you got more than that. You got a divine heritage. Okay, and I'm going to read you what she said. She said, I became heir to a fortune more than 40 years ago in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I gave my life to Jesus at that moment. I was born again into the richest family ever known. I was born into the royal family that owns and operates the universe. I received an inheritance so vast it will take me all of eternity to fully comprehend it. And that's, that is true. And that's amazing. 
So what we want to endeavor to do here is help you understand that you are that heir. Yes. You've received this inheritance. And so we just want to go through a few scriptures here and just talk about being a being an heir of God. Right. You know, this has changed your life forever. It did. That's right. Yeah. If you receive it. Yeah. And renew your mind to it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can I read this? Yes. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. New Living Translation. Yeah. It says, But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, hearts prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Think about that. That's God amazing. has made you his That's heir. That's pretty amazing. Let's talk about being an heir. You, you've done that. Yeah. When my dad died, uh, he, he had a will. Mm -hmm. And I have two brothers. Uh, two brothers. Mm-hmm. And so we uh, uh, got the will. We went to the lawyer's office, and the lawyer began to read over it, and, and it laid out how, how our daddy, everything that he had, everything that he owned, mm -hmm. how it was to be distributed between the three of us. Right. It's called a will, yeah. and that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, God left us a will, too. That's right about how he wants to distribute everything. That's right. It's, it's called the Bible. There it is. And it's right here from Genesis through Revelation. That's right. And everything in there is full of promises that God has for each one of us. And we're heirs of those promises. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you go to church, you're actually going to hear the reading of the will. The reading of the will, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Every time you go, you should expect man, I'm going to get more information about this inheritance, mm -hmm. about what's happened to me and, and what I can do now to further the kingdom of God on the earth. That's exactly right. Yeah. God has made you an heir. Okay, so the reason Jim and his brother were, were heirs is simply because they were born into the family. Born into the family, that's right. You know, and, you know, you think about people like... Um, well, famous people. Think about, think about John D. Rockefeller. Right. Think about him. Okay, his son, just because he was born a Rockefeller, just because of that, he was heir to the family fortune. That's right. Uh, you know, and, and it's all because of covenant with, with all, us, with us yeah. and God. All yeah. because of covenant. So, so because you've been born into the kingdom of God. That makes you his child. And I love what it said here about no longer a slave. That's right. It said no longer. It said you are his very own child. Man, that is so good. Yes, it is. Okay, now let me read you this. This is First Peter, and it's chapter 1. Okay. And I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation, and I'm going to read verse 3 and 4. Okay. And it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His mercy that we have been born again. That's by His mercy right. that you've been born again because that puts you in the family. Yes, it did. God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Listen to this. We have a priceless inheritance. Mm. Oh, isn't that good? Yeah. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. You have a priceless. That means it's so valuable that you can't even say how expensive it is. Right. It's priceless. It's you know, just that reminds me. Why don't you just take a minute and talk about the nativity scene that we got years and years ago from that lady? Do you remember? Yeah, I do remember. Okay. okay. This was Jim and I, and let's see, we we only had our first two children right. at that time. They were very young, like maybe ages two and three or three and four. And so anyway, it was Christmas time. And so we had, we were, you know, just 
kind of new in learning about the things of God. Right. Even though, like you've heard Jim tell his story, he was born again at the age of what? Twelve. Twelve. I was born again, I think I was ten. And we knew about God, but we didn't know anything, okay? And so at this point in our lives, here we are, adults with these little children, and we're just beginning to learn about what happened to us when we got born again. I mean, that's really how it was. And so anyway, that year it was Christmas time, and we wanted our children to grow up with a understanding Christmas is about it's about Jesus coming into the earth. We wanted them to know that. And, you know, before, before this time, we were just like everybody else in the world. We had Santa Claus everywhere and, you know, all that stuff, you know. Not that there's, you know, you just need to be careful about all that. You need to have your priorities right, okay? And so, anyway, we took the big Santa Claus down. And so I said, you know, we just got to have a little nativity scene. And so, anyway... How did I get that woman's name? I don't know. We didn't have Facebook in those days. But anyway, this lady called me, and she just said, hey, she said, I've got this little nativity scene. She said, I'm, I've replaced it with a new one, okay? And so she said, you know, I would love for your family to have it. And so it was in this really nice neighborhood in town, and so she says, just come by my house. You know, so I went to her house, and it was it was – it was the traditional little nativity scene with the little wooden um, barn right. looking thing and, you know, all the little sheep and the little, everything was just, you know, that one that you think of as vintage. It was that way. And so anyway, she gave it to us. And so we were so blessed because we didn't have a great deal of extra money to go shop and buy extra stuff. And so, but it was just such a, such a moment for our family because, you know, our, our children got to see how, you know, God right. wanted to just bless us. Right. And then, you know, we used it year after year after year and, and still did. You, had, you were wanted to pay the lady. Yeah. And she said, well, I can't put a price on this. Yeah. And so that's how that, it was that valuable to her. She said, well, I can't. So she had to give it. Yeah, she gave it to us. So anyway, that's, you know, that that's really good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So, all right, we want to, to talk about this. So, you and I have been given all these promises. Mm -hmm. And so we need to, to appropriate these promises into our life, right? We're heirs of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of uh, uh, one of the things that I like to talk about so much is, is uh, Mephibosheth. Yeah. You know, here, here he is, he's living out in the desert. Mm -hmm. He does not know. He does not know about the covenant <laughs> that his daddy made, his daddy Jonathan made with David. Mm -hmm. Doesn't know about it. Nope. He does no not idea. know. He does not know that he is a wealthy man. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's penniless living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's the way he was living. But he didn't have to. But he didn't know. But he didn't know. And see, if you don't know, you know, like for instance, if I were to go to, to the bank uh, and put a million dollars in your checking account, well, if you had no way of knowing that it was there, you couldn't spend it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so Mephibosheth, David goes and gets him, and he says to Mephibosheth, he says, Mephibosheth, I'm going to restore to you everything mm -hmm. that belonged to your family grandfather Saul. And he mm -hmm. said, and from this day forward, you, Mephibosheth, will dine at my table. Mm -hmm. So, here, you know, when you and I were born again, because of what Jesus did, God restored to you and I everything that Adam lost. That's right. Everything. Everything that Adam lost mm -hmm. in the garden, God restored to us. But you have to learn that. You have to learn it. That's mm -hmm. right. It, it doesn't just happen. Okay, I'm going to read you another scripture, okay. unless you have more words. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Okay, this is Romans chapter 8. This is 14 through 17. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage. Remember, you're not a slave anymore. That's right. You didn't receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. We are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Joint heirs with Jesus. Now, that's good. That, and that's what God did for us in Christ Jesus. Simply because he loves us so, so much. So much. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. that's just, that's good. It is, it's really, truly amazing. You know, the, the thing of it is, though, you don't know. You don't know. You have to. You cannot take advantage of what you don't know. Right. You know, just like the Mephibosheth, you know, like, I think you told me one time, you said, you know, he could have even gone and told King David who he was. That's right. He could. He could have done that. He could have. But he didn't know. That's right. He didn't know. And besides that, he was afraid. He was afraid. That's because right. he had been, you know, he was lame because the nurse had dropped him when they mm -hmm. ran to escape King David, right. I guess. Right. And so, yeah. So he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know. So you, you, it, what, it, if you don't know it, it won't help you. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. You have to know. You have to know. See, that's the reason it's so important. That's the reason Sue and I talk so much about reading your Bible mm -hmm. every day. That, that way you know what, what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. And that's good. That is good. God is good. God loves you. He's made provision for, for you. You. Mm -hmm. you need to understand that. He has made provision for you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. Uh, we would love to have you uh, a partner with us here on the bottom line. Uh, we have a new way of, of giving. If you'd like to do it, you can uh, text L-C-E-L-D-O, L-C-E-L-D-O to the number 73256, and we would appreciate it very, very much. God loves you, and we love you. Mm -hmm.